Hey there, hey there, hello there, it's Jeff Cutter Dummy. Welcome you to another Degrassiisms poll, and we are doing the top six characters from the from the final graduating class. I wrote it down as 2018, but I think I'm wrong. That's 2017, isn't it? Well, it doesn't matter. The final graduating class of Degrassi. Now, as of this tape, the show, this episode's taping. There, it's still debatable if HBO Max, with their cuts, have cut Degrassi, the Degrassi reboot that we're supposed to see next year at all. Like, there are rumors circulating that it won't be done. I mean, it's kind of pathetic, don't you think? So, of course, this is the last graduating class ever in Degrassi. So, anyway, there weren't too many issues with that, with the poll. Now, I screwed up the poll because I put Zoe with the class of 2014, whereas she didn't graduate till the bitter end. So, I had to switch Zoe out for Shay. And all that. And so he is in the top six. So no honorable mentions this time. So uh, here we go. Yeah, number six is Tiny. Now I needed three boys and three girls because I wanted to be gender neutral. But anyway, Tiny was a decent character. He was introduced as a guy in a gang held by his cousin Fence. Well, I thought it was cousin Fence, but it was his brother Fence. The same Fence who wanted to go after Drew and Bianca for hurting his right-hand man, Anson. Of course, Tiny is introduced in the game, in a game like, but Tiny is pretty smart. Like, he's a smart guy with a great future and all that. So, yeah, him being in a game just didn't make sense and all that. And, you know, Tiny was upset because Vince went to jail and he had no one to be around and all that. But he managed to make it on his own, I think. And Tiny went off to college. Number five is Esme. Now, she should have been ranked higher. You're right. But the show ended before Esme's thing could have been properly solved. So Esme was introduced, I believe, was it the first season of Next Class? I think so. But anyway, she was this, well, Korean, Korean um, girl who wore her hair in a braid in a certain way, wearing weird granny sweaters and all that. But Esme became one of the most hypocritical and most, oh, I can't think of the word right now. Not blackmail, but you know what I mean. Esme would get people into trouble. She got Miles into trouble because, you know, she cuts her hair and gave the scissors to Miles, and Miles got in trouble from it. You know, she was manipulative, the most manipul one of the most manipulative characters in the Jurassic history. Now, Esme had her good moments, too, but Esme was in weird relationships, but in Season 17, a.k.a. Next Class Season 3, she does become a hero. When Maya decides to jump off the roof with Esme and Sig making out like rabbits, they both find Maya convulsing, and Maya and Esme tell Sig, don't make her throw up because she could choke on her vomit because Esme saw her mom kill herself at age 10, when she was 10. And Esme had a trauma. She had a lot of trauma when Miles wanted to show pictures of Tristan after the bus crash, recovering from the bus crash, but Simpson nixed it. But yeah, Esme was upset with Miles. And who can blame Esme? Esme finally puts herself in a polio Morris relationship with Frankie and Sig. I guess she wanted to be with Sig, but was scared of losing Sig, so to Frankie, and so decided to let Frankie in on this relationship. Esme, of course, was upset with Maya because after, oh, Esme was a hero for saving Maya's life, but in the end, people gravitated towards her, so that meant that Maya, that mean Esme was upset that people wanted to go towards Maya instead of her. So she be, tried to be manipulative as fuck, trying to get people off so, uh, to stop helping Maya out, but it failed. She ends up being with Sig and all that in a relationship. She gets mad when Sig goes to the problem with Maya, even though Maya said that it was just a pure accident. She beats him up. Sig is okay and manages to get to the graduation ceremony. But in the end, uh, Esme buys Sig a motorcycle to try to keep him around. Sig says My, uh, Esme needs help. And so Esme beats him up with the bike helmet, but the 
Guidance counselor Miss Grew says Esme is not too late to admit you need help. And Esme collapses into her arms. And the worst part is, you know, what Esme be personally uh, like diagnosed with maybe borderline personality disorder, being bipolar, you know, what, what happened to her? I just feel like they left Esme's story wide open, too wide open. Number four is Zoe. Zoe was introduced in season 13 as this girl who used to be part of a reality show but was kicked off for her behavior. She goes to Degrassi. She actually is, tags along with the trip to France with most of the Degrassi people because, you know, her mom's, Zoe's mom wanted her to fit in with the Degrassi people. So basically, Zoe goes to France and then Zoe is a decent person. She gets interviewed by Claire for a magazine article. She seemed to be fine. Unfortunately, Zoe's bad side came through. Zoe, seeing how good Miles was, decided to dox or swat Maya by putting her face on on top um, swimsuit pictures and all that, basically making um, Maya a target for people on the internet to go after. Maya is unhappy with Zoe's move and decides to write a song to hate on Zoe, but she gets in trouble with Simpson, who doesn't want to listen to her and all that. And then Zoe, well, Zoe's mom is upset, saying that Zoe has dyslexia and all that, but I don't know if that was actually real or not. Anyway, Zoe's mom manages to get Snake to bow down to her presence with Zoe and all that. Zoe gets away with it. Maya is upset, and rightfully so. I mean, but Zoe really faces no repercussions from the whole sexual thing. And Maya gets in trouble for writing a song and put it into the rubber room by a vengeful snake. Idiot. Snake should have been thrown out of jail. Or thrown out for that matter. But yes, yeah, but Zoe stays with Miles, even though that Maya wants to be with Miles. Zoe unfortunately gets raped at a thing at the Hollingsworth house by um, Luke Baker and an associate. Zoe doesn't know what to do. She she does well in a rape trial, reacting to all this stuff. And Zoe gets her her happiness as Luke and the boy are put into juvie, and Zoe was a credible witness. So he's happy about it. And then Zoe and Maya do make up at the end of season 13, saying that, you know, Miles is a bad guy. He put us against each other. Unfortunately, Zoe in season 14 would be a whole different story. Despite her being hailed as a hero and all that and making her a good girl in everyone's eyes she turned evil the school needed more money for their spirit squad outfit so the power squad so she decides to have them post risque photos on themselves and make people pay for them so she gets the, the cheer squad to do all that frankie says no i don't want to do that and is mad at Zoe. Zoe basically kinks, kicks Frankie off the squad and forces Frankie to stay silent because, you know, you're just as guilty as everyone else. You know, Zoe just being pushy and all that. Okay, uniforms one thing, but, like, to put girls at risk of being in trouble by their sexy pictures and they're underage, and also the fact that people from Degrassi, including Hunter and Frankie's sisters, find those pictures? What the fuck? So yeah, so Zoe basically manipulates the cheer squad knowing that, you know, if they try to talk, they could get in trouble too. Zoe then gets caught up in a storm of controversy thanks to Winston who wanted to help Frank get on the the power squad back and, you know, doing anything for his girlfriend. But Zoe is told by Sig and I think Lola to come clean with the problems because the girls are going to hate you, are not going to hate you as much. The girls hate you now. You don't want them hating you for the rest of it. So he then basically tells Sig it's over and decides to go to the police officer. So he fortunately gets lucky that she doesn't get in deep trouble. She could have served five years for child pornography and all that. So she's forced to work in the cafeteria and then she tries to become a hero by smuggling phones into um, Degrassi because of the no cell phone policy. Pill did. And Pill could have destroyed Zoe, but she didn't. Why? I don't know. Was Pill under Zoe's spell? But yes, yeah, Zoe became very hated. And then when Zoe decides to come out of the closet towards Grace, but Grace is straight, Zoe learns her sexual identity. The worst part is when she 
comes out of the closet, she's not getting all the movie and TV roles that she's used to. Kind of homophobic, if you ask me. But so his mom takes it angrily, saying that, you know, so he's just being an actress and all that. And so his mom lives off of Zoe's income doing these shows and all that. When Zoe comes to um, her mom's second wedding in a suit, no less, with Rasha, Zoe's mom finally decides to boot Zoe from her house, saying that you can't be gay on my premises and all that. I know Zoe should not have done that, tried to come out at her, her mom's second wedding. But, like, you know, Zoe was just trying to prove that she was gay. And Consuela booted her. Zoe moves in with Grace and all that. And then, you know, Zoe becomes a decent person and a sympathetic person. She likes Rasha. She doesn't care. I know she loses movie roles because everyone's homophobic, but her mom basically was a dick. When Zoe's named fellow Victorian, for some odd reason, she wants her mom to come to the graduation ceremony. And her mom reluctantly agrees. But then the day of, she sends her husband, or Zoe's dad, with some stuff for Zoe's mom, for Zoe into college. She just couldn't do it. Now, I know the common thing is that Zoe's mom was upset because, you know, she's Catholic. And the Catholics sometimes have bad feelings towards people in the LGBTQ community. Well, it's not as prevalent anymore as it used to be. But, yeah, it calmed down. But it is because of Zoe's mom... You know, being upset that since Zoe wasn't getting movie roles and all that, she couldn't live off her daughter. So it was either Zoe's mom finds a job or finds a sugar daddy. You can probably guess what option Consuelo went with. However, Zoe's valedictorian speech doesn't make her valedictorian speech. She's too upset to do that. But then at the Hollingsworth, when she did that, she said, I don't need her. I got my family right here with my fellow graduate graduates. And then she and Rasha are a power couple. That's kind of nice. Uh, number three is Sig. Speaking of trouble, Sig was introduced in season 12 as a potential boyfriend to Maya. And, you know, Sig was okay, but Sig became very jealous when Maya showed some affection towards Cam Saunders. So Sig is upset. Sig gets Cam to go off the deep end by pushing his buttons during a ball hockey thing. And, you know, Cam gets in trouble because Maya refuses to protect him. You know, Maya knows that Sig provoked him. Sig should be in trouble, too. But no. Cam gets in trouble. Cam tries to make up with Maya and all that. They go. Cam wants to go to the front of the school to be with, to bring Maya's stuff all hoot home. But Sig stops him, says that stay out of Maya's life forever. You know, it's kind of jealousy and all that. Sig doesn't realize that Cam was going to go kill himself. Now, you can kind of blame Sig for that matter, like what he said. And a lot of people said, well, he's a jealous boyfriend. He would have said it anyway. But still, it just doesn't make sense from Sig. And Sig confesses to Maya that he may have pushed Maya, Cam over the edge, and Maya brushes him off. I mean, I understand. You know, Sig wanted to be with Maya. It, but, you know, there were a lot of things wrong with Cam and all that. Simpson should have seen the signs and all that. But, yeah. So Sig then becomes a gang member, and in season 13, he bumps into Maya in the rubber room, and they have a relationship and all that. Sig is a little bit jealous. Sig goes with Zoe at times, making Maya jealous. But when I look at Sig, it's like, when Sig's with Maya as a boyfriend-girlfriend, he doesn't really care much about her. Whereas when Maya has affection from other boys, like Miles or Cam, or probably one guy I'm forgetting, Sig just wants to destroy Maya's relationship with that guy. I compare Sig to Veronica from the Archie comics. And I have to say Archie comics because the Riverdale show is a whole lot freaking different. Anyway, so, you know, like Veronica, she only cares about Archie because Betty wants to be with Archie. And when Betty and Archie break off, Veronica, the, instead of wanting to go towards Archie, because Veronica technically won, she decides to date someone else. She And she even says, I don't know if I want Archie if Betty doesn't want him. So Veronica shows her her true colors in a sense in a few comic strips. But yeah, it's just sickening. Well, too, you know, Sig as Veronica, whereas um, 
you know, you know, says, I don't want Maya if no one else wants her. Only when, you know, when Veronica is bored with Archie, and I guess Maya is Archie. But anyway, Sig joins the gang. He tries to get out of the game. Like Maya tries to help Sig out by putting him in her house. But unfortunately, Maya and Sig have feelings for each other, and Sig is booted to the curb. Because Maya's mom doesn't want a relationship. Doesn't want to ruin things. I get it. But poor Sig and all that. Sig then stays with Maya. Sig and Maya go to the prom accidentally towards each other. And, you know, Sig is concerned about Esme, but Esme doesn't return everything back. Number two is Miles Hollinsworth. So Miles was introduced as this guy who actually went to private school, but he burned it, so he had to go to Degrassi. So Miles was kind of a playboy guy with with Zoe and all that. Miles' relationship with Zoe in season 13 caused Maya to flip out and all that and breaking off with Miles. And then in season 14, Miles is with Zoe. Miles has some problems. I mean, Miles is with Maya, beg pardon. And, you know, Maya becoming overprotective. I'll get more into that when I talk about Maya. You know, she's number one, obviously. But Miles was bisexual. He liked girls, but he liked guys too. He wanted to have a relationship with Tristan. And Mayor soon to be Mayor Hollinsworth was pissed off that Miles would be trying to ruin his mayoral race by declaring he was gay and all that. Miles was not too happy with his dad cheating on his mom, but then finds out that his dad broke off the mistress with the mistress because he needed to fix his family. And Miles was happy. And then, you know, you know, Miles had troubles with his dad. His dad would beat him and all that. Finally he shows his true colors in front of Frankie and Hunter, and they all agree that their dad's a piece of crap. Who still wins the mayoral race? How? But anyway, yeah, Miles accidentally burns the school, burns Degrassi in season 14 when he was upset over his dad making a campaign stop to build a new wing for Degrassi. It's like, does Degrassi need a new wing? And is this basically nepotism? Because, you know, his three kids go to that school. So, yeah, he probably thinks that Degrassi's underfunded and all that. He probably isn't underfunded. But anyhow, Degrassi, you know, Miles burns it. Accidentally, of course. You know, Miles, after getting his dad in trouble, tells Maya, you can check up on me every so often. Miles says, nah, you're good. So Miles wants to be with Tristan. They're a decent couple with each other. Unfortunately, though, Tristan gets in that bus crash and... Miles doesn't know about it. Miles actually impregnates Lola by accident, and we see Lola in the room to get her abortion and all that, which was the first time I think a Canadian show did that. But as is, um, Tristan understands about Miles wanting to break it up, saying, I don't want to get in the way of your happiness. So Miles and Tristan are not a couple. And it feels like, to me, it's like Miles and Winston could be a couple, but Winston goes with Goldie. But the fact of the matter is that, you know, Miles was a decent guy. He goes to writing school. I thought he said writing school, R-I-D-I-N-G, but no, it's writing, W-R-I-T-I-N-G, to Europe to be a writer and all that. You know, he's free from Tristan, but he's a decent character. And number one, without any freaking doubt, was Maya. It's basically the Maya class, if you will. So Maya was introduced in... In part, in what, season 10 or 11? Can't remember. With Katie, you know, Katie being her older sister. And Maya finding out about her sister taking their mom's medication for multiple sclerosis, if my memory serves me right, MS. Yeah, so that she could get better with her knee and, you know, take drugs to prevent her knee from breaking because she wanted to be part of the Canadian soccer team. Not Maya, but Katie. Maya was a cello virtuoso who loved classical music and, dance, and dressed okay. And then in season 12, she meets Cam Saunders and falls in love with him, despite being with Sig, too. It feels like Maya wants to protect Sig from Cam's sternness and all that, despite the fact that Maya liked Cam. And then Maya was shocked that Cam would try to get out of hockey by jumping off the balcony at school or slashing himself with his skates. He, she knew Cam needed help, but unfortunately she was tied down to Sig in a sense. Cam apologizes to Maya about his behavior and sleeps over, but then leaves the house and takes 
Maya stuffed all Al Hoot. So Maya is not sure about it. Cam breaks up with her over a text, and Maya doesn't think that much. Worst of all, Cam is found by Eli in the J.T. York Memorial Greenhouse. Killing himself. Well, of course, the writers didn't want to glorify um, suicide by telling how it happened. But there's many different theories. He either slashed his throat with the with something and bled out. He hung himself, or even more profound, in my mind, is he found garden chemicals and drank garden chemicals and then somehow may have drank chemicals before he hung or slashed himself. That's also a thing. And as somebody who worked in a garden center three years ago, I should know about toxicity of chemicals and all that and how bad they are, well, on, on plants like crabgrass, but also on the human body. So... Yeah, that's how I kind of figured it. It's like, it makes sense because, you know, my experience at a garden center. But the fact of the matter is that, you know, Cam died. Maya is told to utilize, 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 give a eulogy. But Maya basically says that Cam was selfish for killing himself. I would have helped him. Why would he do that? And, you know, everyone was upset that Maya was not upset. They wanted her to be upset. And she wanted to do her cello thing instead of dealing with Cam's death. I mean, it's normal. But then it finally catches up to her by her being promiscuous and all that. Everyone gets mad at her saying, you can't forget Cam. And she blows off saying, why not? He broke up with me over a text. I would have helped him if I wanted to. He broke up with me by killing himself. I hate him. I hate him. And I'll never be happy again. Jeez, what a downer. So Maya gets past that point, and then she gets at rivalry with Zoe, which she could have gotten Zoe in deep trouble, but Maya's mom said, I don't think it's a good idea. I don't think Zoe would, it would be a good idea. Zoe makes that fake apology. She gets Maya wound up. Maya goes to the rubber room, thanks to Simpson being a dick ass. And, you know, she hangs out with Sig in the rubber room and all that. She tries to be with Miles the first time. But it wasn't some kind of sec, um, so issues. And then she breaks up with Miles because she was, he, he was with Zoe. I mean, fair enough. Maya was pissed off at Zoe for getting her in so much trouble that Simpson had to be a dick. But anyway, yeah, Maya and Zoe do make up at the end of the season. Season 14, she, comes back, she goes back towards being with Miles and is shocked about Miles' behavior in the wake of his dad being in trouble giving him trouble. And worst of all, so he had, and Maya has nightmares about him jumping off a balcony or slashing himself, realizing that this is what Cam did. So Maya was starting to have visions about Cam, but j just in Miles' skin. She wants to go to a professional, her mom agrees, and then she wants to protect Miles so much when Miles smokes weed and accidentally hits a car, which had my, uh, Dallas's girlfriend, Vanessa, and baby Rocky in it. All that. So, you know, Maya wants to protect Miles because, you know, Miles will get hurt by his dad. But then she decides, Miles decides to tell the truth about it, and Maya is exposed by perjury. Her mom's not too happy, saying she really needs help. And Maya says, But I had to. Miles' dad's going to beat the tar out of him. It's okay to feel for a guy, but don't waste your life around him. And then the police officer tells Maya, You can't help someone who can't help themselves. And Maya tells Miles, you need help and you've got to fix this yourself. So, yeah, in a sense, Maya did it. But I think everyone failed her. And Maya could have easily uh, fixed her problem by saying about Cam and all that. And people would have been more sympathetic. But they basically were bitches towards her. However, in Firestarter, you know, she's with Miles. And then Miles finally gets his dad's goose, if you will. And Miles tells Maya, thanks for everything. Check up on me every so often. Well... The fact of the matter is that Miles ghosts, Miles ghosts Maya on everything. And Maya is trying to look for it. People are concerned about her. And she says, I can't have this happen again. Because she says, this is just like Cam's death. She could have said Cam and, you know, they would have understood. But then again, I mean, I think people felt her more than she felt everyone else. So, yeah, so she scoffs and walks away from Miles smiling. And I take it as a sign that she finally got rid of her guilt. She alleviated her guilt with Cam, and I think she wanted to be with Miles in season 14 to help him out so that she wouldn't feel so bad about failing to help Cam out a couple seasons before. Fight me on it. 
So then Maya becomes a feminist in a way. Well, she was supposed to be with Sig, but and allow Sig to stay at her house because she he got kicked out because of his gang activity. But then, you know, Maya and Sig couldn't be a couple, but they just couldn't lie to Maya's mom. I don't know where her dad is. But anyway, yeah. So Maya loses Sig and all that. I can understand Maya's mom and all that, but, you know, sending him out of the streets where he could be easily coursed into a gang? Mm. Anyway, Maya becomes a feminist in Next Class Season 1, a.k.a. Season 15 for me. And she uses the power, alongside Goldie, to get Hunter's Gaming Club to be um, booted. Hunter gets mad at, so, at Maya. Although a lot of people say Goldie used Maya as a mouthpiece. But she didn't know that Maya would be targeted by Hunter. So Hunter goes looking for blood. Thankfully, Miles stops Hunter from making something. And I forgot to mention this when I talked about Miles in the list. Is that, you know, a lot of people were shocked that Miles got back to Degrassi after setting fire and all that. But to me, it feels like Mayor Hollinsworth put pressure on Snake to do something. Or else he could have destroyed Snake's career or the school board's career. After all, while well, he was mayor, and he may put pressure on Snake to allow his son, who accidentally burnt the school, to come back. And this is with the Hunter situation. Because, yeah, I know that Simpson didn't know that Hunter had a gun, and thankfully, Mrs. Hollingsworth put Hunter in a psychiatric ward. I mean, I understand. But Hunter was allowed to come back after the gun, and I think people knew about it. It was so Simpson probably groveling. And also with the fact that Frankie's racist poster, however bad it is, Frankie never got punished. And maybe people thought that Simpson was just worried about Hollingsworth's wrath. I think so, but fight me on it. But regardless, Maya becomes a feminist, almost gets targeted by Hunter, thank God Miles saves the day. And then Maya's okay, and then, you know, she is part of a booster squad to help the volleyball team take down Northern Tech, and then they get in a bus crash. Maya's okay. Tristan's hurt and a coma, and Maya thinks that she is the cause of trouble. Even though that Tristan was kind of a POS towards Maya. Let's not forget in season 13, Maya telling on Mr. Yates after he was grooming Tristan, and Tristan got pissed off saying that, you're just jealous. You have all these great relationships and you want to ruin me? Why? And then Tristan forces Maya to apologize to him. Like, piece of crap. So yeah, so Maya goes through her depression and anxiety and then, and yeah, maybe Cam got it in her head again. We thought we were done with that. But yeah, she has the depression. She decides to kill herself off. Wants Sig to have a note. And then she was going to take pills on the school bus and then put headphones on and basically fall asleep and kill herself. But she she can't do it after 30 minutes. She says, what am I doing wrong? She sees the school roof, wants to jump off of it. But then the pills kick in because, you know, pills take a while to kick in. And she's convulsing. And thankfully, Sig and Esme save her butt. Maya goes through a, well, season four, she goes through a recovery process. And she's upset over the fact that Sig got hurt by Esme the prom because she had to go with Sig at the prom. So she decides not to go to graduation. However, Grace decides to tell Maya, what would the therapist say and all that? And you know, to be positive. Thank God for Grace because um, Maya did her job. And then Maya actually told Sig she had to tell on Esme's problems to help Esme out because it was the right thing to do. And also because Esme did kind of save her life. So she owed Esme one. Despite the fact that Esme was pissed off with Maya. So that's what happened. And Maya becomes a hero. She and Sig go to California. We don't know what happens to them. Do we care? I don't know. But anyway, thanks for watching this diatribe. And that's the end of all the graduating classes of Degrassi. I hope you like this little mini-series, if you will. Uh, there'll be probably more polls coming up soon, but I don't have much topics. Sorry about that. Anyway, I'm Jeff Diamond. Thanks for watching.